So I'm guessing you are watching this video because you have an Airwheel S3 self-balancing device, kind of similar to the Segway, and you're having problems with it not turning on and not taking a charge. At least that's what my problem was. If that's yours as well, I may have the answer. It's actually fairly simple, a concept, but uh, a little tricky to do, but not too bad. <clears throat> I ended up uh, taking my air wheel apart more than I needed to. Um, I'm going to post a couple of pictures because I did not take video along the way. I just took a couple of pictures, which kind of is the thousand words you need to uh, try and do this yourself. So the manual actually says to keep it charged like every 90 days at least because if the battery charge goes too low that it may damage the system. I don't think it really damaged it. I think it um, causes some circuitry to not allow you to charge it. <clears throat> if you um, take the um, handle off, which is pretty straightforward, there's a big knob that you turn to take all the way out and then the handle pulls out of its socket and there's literally a, a deconnector socket on the bottom of that handle. Just be careful of that. <clears throat> you can take that off. There's no wiring to undo. It's just that one socket. And it's best to do that so you can easily turn the base over to get to the battery system. Now the battery system is held in by a number of um, bolts that use an Allen wrench that is actually supplied with the device. So ideally, if yours is like mine, you got two Allen wrenches, one of a small gauge and one large, fairly large. And it's that larger one that goes into the deep sockets of the battery. So if you turn the base uh, of the air wheel over so that you can get to the underside, you'll see the several deep uh, pockets where the screws are. And you simply loosen them with that Allen wrench tool or another one of the right size. Take all the bolts out and then the battery simply will kind of fall out. There's two little ears, one on each side you can use to pull it. Try to pull it straight. Don't, you know, jar it around. It does have um, a fairly simple socket that, uh, a connector that it uh, connects into. So it'll pull straight out. And it shouldn't be difficult at all as long as you have all the bolts out. Now the um, battery now out, the socket shows two large prongs and I believe two smaller ones. It's the two larger ones you want to check out. <clears throat> Just get out a regular uh, voltmeter and make sure it's on DC. Um, it could be up to 67 volts, so I would go like 100 volt DC range, whatever you um, want to do to be safe. <clears throat> and then put your leads in those big sockets. They are female, um, kind of copper looking sockets, probably the size of, uh, I don't know, the tip of a Q-tip or something like that. And um, so find out the polarity. I believe <clears throat> as you look at it with the sockets at the top of the battery, when you're looking at the battery, um, yeah, I guess I don't remember. I think the one on the left is the minus and the one on the right is the positive, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, actually, the picture should show, I think, because there should be, um, I think I have a uh, black indicator on one of them, on one of my clip leaves. So anyway, find out the polarity. Your voltmeter will tell you. Don't, don't trust me. And make sure you keep note of what's minus and positive on that battery. Just Again, there's two big um, connectors. And then um, there's a smaller couple. Um, and what you want to do is see what the voltage is. Mine was like 9 volts when I checked and I let it sit out for quite a while. It went down to 2 point something volts. It went really low. <clears throat> it's supposed to be like 67 volts and so I thought okay I might have a bad cell or it's too far gone but I thought you know finding a battery is nearly impossible I like saw one on eBay or Alibaba or something for 900 bucks I'm like forget it 
So I thought, well, I could try to take it apart and find out which cell is bad, which, which is the assumption that a cell is bad, which often is, you know, the case with bad battery packs. <clears throat> but I thought this thing didn't get a lot of use and it just, I just let it go too low. So what if I could somehow offboard charge it to a point where now the system says, okay, there's enough voltage. I'll let you charge it the regular way. So what I did was I took a, um, a 12 volt trickle charger and I connected it to those two leads, obviously plus to plus minus to minus. And I had to find two bolts that were the right diameter that would fit into those female receptacles on the battery. And I had to put like a insulating space between them. So you don't want to risk shorting out. You do however you want. This is how I did it. And with clip leads, I attached those bolts, a bolt in the positive, one in the negative, again, an insulator in between clip leads on there so that I could get it to the charger. Now, when I put my charger on there, it didn't register that it was charging. Now, mind you, that's a 12 volt charger going to like a 67 volt battery pack. I get it. it doesn't make sense. But I thought as long as I could charge it and bring it up, maybe, you know, I could somehow put the regular uh, wall wart charger, the one with the, the plugs in the wall that you normally plug in, that should be the right voltage uh, into there. And I'm kind of assuming that since it's DC coming out of that wall pack, that it's the correct voltage to go directly into that battery pack. A number of assumptions on my part, but it's like, what do I have to lose? So with that 12 volt charger, back to that 12 volt charger, it didn't register as though we're trying to charge it. And I think it has enough smarts in there to say, yeah, this is not something we want to try to charge for whatever reason. So I tricked it by putting a 12 volt battery I had, like a motorcycle battery, and I could charge that. I could, I could trickle charge that with the 12 volt charger and then clip lead this pack in parallel. Again, plus to plus, minus to minus. Make sure of that. <clears throat> if you're not sure of any of this, don't do it. I, mean, I cannot take liability. I disavow liability of something blowing up. And actually, while I did this, I did it only during the day when I was around and I had a fire extinguisher around in case it somehow blew up on me, literally, and caught fire. <clears throat> None of that happened. So I, I put this trickle charger on the 12 volt motorcycle battery, clip leaded in parallel, the battery pack. And I checked later in the day and the voltage had come up a few volts, it went up to, you know, 10 volts and then 12 and 15 and so forth. <clears throat> um, at some point I said, okay, it's not coming up any further on the 12 volt. Then I used the wall plug, um, call it a wall wart, the actual pack lays on the floor. It doesn't hang on the wall, <clears throat> but the one that came with the air wheel. And I needed to put pins in there in order to get to, because they're female, it's a female connector, right, that goes into the air wheel itself. So the two pins um, on either side of the, um, well, let's see if I can show you actually. The two pins on either side of the dimple that <clears throat> is on this thing, uh, you can kind of see how I have it with an insulator between clip leads on each of these screws and an insulator. Kind of crummy, but hey, it worked. Um, so let me take these off and you can see, hopefully you can see, there's this dimple at the top. You kind of see it that way. And it's the top two that are the plus and minus. Again, check with your meter to make sure <clears throat> you have the polarity correct. Plus to plus, minus to minus. You know, I keep saying that, but if you don't do that, you could ruin a couple of things, if not cause a fire. Whoa, sorry about that. <clears throat> and so, like I said, when the 12 volt uh, charger kind of went up to... 9, 10, 11, 12 volts, whatever it was. I stopped and then I tried to put this charger on there by doing the clip leads carefully with pins in both the battery and pins that fit into the charger 
on those top two pins. The third one didn't seem to be needed. Maybe it's one of those things that can, gets controlled by the logic of the board that says, hey, the voltage is too low, so I'm not going to charge. That was kind of what it was. <clears throat> but again, insulators between the pins, careful with the clip leads. Don't make sure they don't pop off and short on something. Do whatever you can. Do a better job than me. Um, so I did that, and I got a spark when I, you know, with a plugged-in power pack, I connected the last... Uh, clip lead. I had everything set up except one clip lead, plugged it in, and then connected the last one. I got a spark, and uh, but the, the the light that was on the charger that was green went out. It went out. If you have nothing connected, it shows green. I did this, it went out. I checked voltage with my meter when this was all hooked up. I checked the voltage at the battery and it was low, but it was, I mean, it wasn't the 67 volts that comes out of that pack. Um, but it was uh, still there. It was doing, it was putting out some voltage. I used a kilowatt, you know, that device you plug in your outlet to see how much current or wattage is being drawn by a device. It wasn't using much, but I thought, what the heck, I'll leave it connected. I'll, I'll make sure I'm around. Again, fire hazard, lithium batteries doing an unusual charging technique, you want to be careful. You could put it out in your garage on the concrete, but you can still burn your garage down. So please, please, please take precautions. The liability is on you. Only do this if you feel confident. I'm not a licensed electrician. I'm, I'm just someone who knows a lot about uh, the basics of electronics. And I thought I would give this a try, like I said, at my own risk. You do the same. So again, back to, I had this set up. I let it sit during the day. I would check it every once in a while with the voltmeter. The voltage was coming up. It seemed to top out at, I want to say like 27 volts or something like that. No, is that right? No, that's not true. Sorry, um, I, I skipped a step. So when I went to check it one time, the light was on, but it was red. Remember I said when I first connected, I got a spark. I thought, okay, something's going on there. The light went out. I'm like, did I damage the charger? Oh, no. you know, I take the connection off. Oh, there's the green light. I guess it's still working. Put it back on, spark, light goes out. I let it sit. I come back, I don't know, a couple hours later, there's a red light. Red light means it's charging, that it's not full. And then I came back even later and there was a green light. And I checked the voltage. It was only in the 30s, not 60s, but in the 30s. Now, I think that was because the um, drag or draw on the charger was such that it just brought it down to that voltage. I, I, I don't really know. Um, maybe it has two, I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's two sets, two, two packs of 30 something to make the 67 volts. And it, I, yeah, I don't know. All I know is a wind green. And I thought, that's a good sign. If it's good, then, and if there's nothing damaged, then maybe the air wheel will come on. So I popped it back in. I didn't even screw it in. I popped it back in on the side, put on the handle, hit the button on the base. It came on. It started talking about, you know, it's warning that it does and that Bluetooth is working. I was amazed. So I turned it off. I took the handle back off. I didn't even need the handle on it, turns out, I, I guess, to, to hear that sound but it turned on so um i bolted the battery back in and i had other you know the deck off i had other things you do not need to do i put everything back together bolted it back um there are the little oh and i forgot to mention there's little round rubber caps that press into the openings of those bolts so you just need a little tiny flat blade screwdriver or something to pick and pop those out they're just kind of stuck in there. They might have a little bit of glue on there, adhesive of some kind. But you just need to pop out the ones that have um, the uh, the big bolts that require the large Allen wrench. Um, just take those out and the battery comes out. So put it back together, put those bolts back in, tighten them down, put those round plastic or rubber uh connectors that you know cover the area protect it since it's on the underside 
It doesn't. You don't want to get water and stuff in there if you go in moisture, rain, puddles, whatever. Um, and it turned on. Oh yeah, I put the handle back on, plugged it in the right way. Um, look at the D connector on one end and look inside and see which way it goes because the handle has a D connector, kind of like the old serial ports on a lap uh, computer, desktop computer. And it only should go in one way. If you put it in the wrong way, it just won't seat properly, so that's okay. But put it in the right way so you can read the lettering, so you can see the display when you're on the, the base. And then um, tighten that bolt back in there until it, you know, holds that handle on. Turn it on. And in my case, like I said, I was able to ride around. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it works great. So I'm going to keep it charged up, set a reminder on my phone every, I don't know, probably week or so because I had a paranoia just to top it off and uh, see how it goes. But there's no damage. Yeah, the battery works fine. It just went down too far. And once you go down too far, the system doesn't let you charge it the normal way. So I kind of hijacked it by getting it topped off, off board, as I call it, where you unplug the battery and you carefully 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 charge using somehow pins you know sticking out to get at those connectors plus to plus minus to minus make sure you have it somewhere or something underneath in case it does catch fire um, if I, I would recommend a fire extinguisher nearby i didn't have any problems okay but it went once it did it get uh charging it was getting warm like it normally does the power pack that comes with it and the battery pack were getting warm. Um, but that's what it normally does when it charges rapidly. So it got to that point, it charged all the way, it worked great. Hopefully it'll work for you as well. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you have any successes, please comment below. I looked high and low for, for solutions myself and I just found how to dis, you know, disassemble stuff or how to replace the battery or the printed circuit board in the battery, but that's not what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for. I hope this helps you. So take care and God bless. And may it save you uh, from throwing it away like I was afraid I'd have to. Take care.